being pretty started with this drawing. What it became was very different. Hello, my name is David, and I recently created an animated short film called Being Prey. It started here. I drew this picture last year, and since then I've wanted to craft an animation around it. It features a monster, living in an alley. A little girl has approached it with a slice of birthday cake. The world is black and white, industrial. There's a couple in the background, pretending not to see what's happening. The only colour is that of the candle. Do not feed the freaks, is written on the wall behind the monster. When I drew this, I saw it in two ways. Either only through the innocent eyes of a child could a monster in an alley be seen as an equal, in a society that is clearly aware of their existence and shuns them. Or this is an example of the wrongdoings of innocence, for this is indeed a dangerous monster that a defenceless and naive little girl is approached. Because you can't see what happens next, it doesn't matter, these are the same thing. That was what this animation was going to be about, I wanted to explore dual perspectives and the themes of naivety and innocence. I started a sketchbook, like I did my last original animation, Redux, filling it with doodles and ramblings, and I began to flesh out the world behind this image. To begin with, I looked to the Deus Ex games in District 9. The way the freaks were going to be treated was going to be very similar to the augmented or the pawns. Propaganda and public perception was going to be a key element to this short. It was only when I started to flesh out the kinds of people and society that would exist in this world behind the picture, where being pretty as you know it started to form. The people were going to look down at these monsters, pretend they weren't even there, and punish those who tried to interact with them. I kept writing down words like compliant, uniform, obey, faceless, and rules. I started to build the society void of individualism, mindless robots fulfilling their roles and obsessed with being pretty and proper at all costs. I decided that these people would wear masks as a symbol of status or uniformity or both, and the first mask I drew was this one. I started to think, these people are mindless cogs ever churning. The children will grow up to be exactly like their parents and the parents will die and be replaced by their children. It's an endless cycle, a perfect machine. But what of the flaws? What of the people who are still human? who might be blind, or old, or sick, or gay. These people don't work in this perfect society. These people are uglies. I drew this picture, which is very reminiscent of the final short. The idea was that these uglies would be killed and fed to the freaks. At this point, the themes of the world behind this picture, those of individualism, compliancy, and brainwashing, were far more interesting to me than the original innocence and naivety. The freaks and the little girl weren't in this world anymore, they were not part of this short. I then looked to other sources of inspiration like the Arndt Jensen Playdead games, Inside and Lumble, both for artistic inspiration but Inside specifically for its themes of compliancy and individualism. The idea that these people were just cogs in a machine really stuck with me, because that's exactly what this is. This is cold calculation, this is binary, you work or you do not. I immediately came to the realisation that this society is run by robots or some kind of artificial hive mind. And then I asked myself, what is a robot's idea of the perfect society? If some artificial mind for some reason was given control to govern an entire civilization of people, what would it do? What would it model that civilization on? The American Dream! 1950s suburban America. The car, the house, the husband hardworking, providing for his family, the wife cooking and cleaning, taking care of the kids, and the kids wide-eyed and brainwashed into becoming exactly their parents when they become old enough. At this point I actually started to write the short. I love the idea of brainwashing an entire civilization of impressionable and innocent children to becoming the next piece of the cycle. So I centered the entire story around a manipulative PSA given to the children of Autodale by a robot about being pretty, and the rest kinda just happened. From the start I wanted this short to be split in two, a happy, creepy and manipulative first act and a cold, dark revelation of a second. Weirdly enough, I got the idea of this act structure from a Source Filmmaker video by Tipsy Duck called How to Climb a Tree. It starts creepy but harmless and then gets really dark and twisted. That video and a funny? Yeah, I drew a little bit of inspiration from both of those. You're funny. 
I debated a lot whether to keep the ending of the short in, the reveal of the matriarch. I wasn't 100% sure if it was necessary or whether people would even understand what it was. I like to end my shorts in a little bit of an unexplained mystery, but not just for the sake of a pointless question mark. But in the end, I did decide to keep it. The entire short is centered around brainwashing compliancy, innocence, and individualism, a civilization of human beings who aren't human anymore. Once you know the society is run by an artificial mind, all of the stylistic quirks, the 1950s aesthetic, the retro cartoons, the masks, the uglies, the brainwashing, and the obsession with being compliant and pretty, just makes sense. This is their queen, their government, and it's a H.R. Geiger-esque monstrosity. What the matriarch actually is, I'm not 100% sure yet. Whether she's entirely robotic, some kind of cyborg, or even the child in the logo that her pose parallels, twisted and experimented on. I'll leave you all to draw your own conclusions. Tech-wise, this wasn't much different from my other recent animated shorts. It's still 3D cel-shaded character models with environments made up of 2D alpha textured planes. And honestly, in a lot of ways, this felt easier than the others. Either that I'm just getting better at it. Some of the later stuff was a little complicated though, with the amount of different layers and techniques I needed to take advantage of. But again, I wouldn't say any of the short managed to get any more complicated than most of the stuff in Redone. Working nearly entirely in monochrome was a little challenging. I wasn't 100% sure if it'd be visually interesting at first, or whether or not the art would be fun to create. But then I remembered working on my Overwatch short Jesse McCree, and how much fun and visually appealing the monochrome scenes in that were. There was also very little actual animation in this short. Just a whole lot of standing, staring, turning heads, and then more standing and staring. Most of the storytelling was told through static imagery, pictures, artwork, over actions and movement. A lot of my shorts are like this, but not all of them. But I do prefer telling stories through imagery, over action, liking painting and drawing, as I do. This short, artistically, was really fun to work on. It was more or less split up into three different parts. The 1950s stuff, the retro cartoon stuff, and the final act. I tackled these one at a time, and never really got bored of working on any of them. When my other animations seemed to sag in the middle, where I feel like I'm animating the same thing over and over, this one managed to stay fresh. I actually looked forward to working on this short every night. The 1950s stuff was inspired by a bunch of different sources. Old movies, the Fallout series, and the Playdead games. The retro cartoon artwork was inspired by old cartoons like Popeye, Retro Disney, the upcoming Cuphead game, and fan art. As for the final act, that's where I had the most fun. I didn't really draw from any particular source. Most of my early doodles look like the final product. All of the last half of this I kinda came up with on the fly. It's nearly entirely my own imagination, with the exception of a little bit of Geiger. I got to really stretch my legs and craft a lovely chunk of my own personal robotic horror. Thinking up a design for the matriarch was challenging though. I like drawing and painting cyborg women. I just do. I think it's the coolest thing. And again, I had another college module last year studying the human form and how to manipulate it. I decided to go for a cybernetic female design. I did a lot of drawings and designs of a robotic female form for that module. The matriarch's design is lifted straight out of the final piece. It was a massive six-piece Geiger-inspired canvas painting I painted around the same time as Don't Feed the Freaks. Her name was Stephanie, given to her by my classmates, but now she's the matriarch. The painting is massive, and I really like it. And I'm kinda glad she has a backstory now. So, I present to you the city of Autodale, human beings run by an artificial government, an all-seeing power that thinks in binary. You are born, brainwashed into becoming the next part of the cycle, replacing your parents. You will grow up, have kids, just to have your children then replace you. This short explores the horror of thinking purely logically, removing all the flaws and oddities that make humans human, where art, personality and expression are taken from you. Your face is literally covered with a permanent, compliant smile, where you are not an individual, you are a cog. I present to you a world that works, like an ever-churning machine where ours arguably does not. It's sexist and it's discriminatory and it's terrifying, but it makes perfect sense. Well, to a machine. 
hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe to see more. And if you liked any of the drawings and paintings you saw, I have an art page on Facebook. Like is in the description. Hope you'll stick with me for another animation. Bye.